Hey guys, Pample here. Welcome to Democracy 3, a new series that I've picked up on the Steam Summer Sale that I've wanted to do for quite a while for a couple of reasons. Now, uh, let me explain this. In the past couple of years, I've taken about three political science classes through school and stuff, and all of which I've had my opinions not taken seriously, I guess you could say, and I've been placed all over the political compass. I've been considered a Republican, a liberal, an anarchist, a fascist, I've been all over the place. So I figured this would be a good game to do a series on, to see what I really am if I can run my own country. So we're going to get started. We get six countries that we can choose from, uh, UK, France, Germany, America, Canada and Australia. I'm going to go with Marka. Got a population of 316 million people as of July 2013. Um, numbers 78 years people live to. Genie. That's, that's a thing. Big Mac index is $4.2, whatever that means. Obesity is 30.6% fat people. That's a lot of fat people. And an average person consumes 57.4 pounds of beef. Is that in a year? I hope so. Okay, and this stuff. Okay, well, we get to name my party. Uh, no. I'm going to be the Pimple Party. And my opposition? The Nerds. Alright, term limit. No limit. We're going to go until I either create a utopian civilization or I drive this country into the ground. Oh, speaking of which, I also picked up the Extremism DLC for this game during the sale, so we should be seeing some of that. Alright, the rest of this seems good. I'm not going to adjust any of this because I have no idea what it means. And we're going to press play. Now I played this for a few minutes just to get through the tutorial. I think I've gotten through all the bits. Anytime you click on something new, it gives you a tutorial. Congratulations on your election victory! Welcome to your new job as president. The lives of all 316,668,000 citizens is now in your hands. As you will imagine, there are a number of situations and concerns that you will need to deal with as soon as possible, keeping an eye on the long-term improvement of our citizens' quality of life. Plus, do not forget that you face re-election in four years. You will need to monitor opinion polls and our party membership. Good luck. Alright, now this uh, shows where our country's kind of standing in the basics. GDP is bad. Health is bad. Education's good. Poverty is meh. Crime is bad. And unemployment's pretty bad, too. Let's get started. Now, already you're probably a bit overwhelmed. But, uh, yeah. That's fine. You can do that. Um, so, um, let's start. Here, all these dots, the uh, blue dots represent different uh, concepts and ideals in the countries. So just here we've got like air travel. Here we've got, I don't know, a light bulb, or energy efficiency. Just concepts like that. Uh, the white are different policies that I have in place. So like here we've got our space program here, we've got shopping tax, um, and the red and green ones represent current, like, things going on within the country. Like here it says we have an asthma epidemic, and the green one is a technological advantage. So green being good events, red being bad. And here in the middle we have all the different demographics of people. Now, and the colored lines represent their opinion of me. The higher their opinion of me, the better my popularity, the higher my chance of getting elected. Right now, my popularity is crap. So uh, we're going to change that, or try. What we can do is we can adjust policies and make small adjustments every term to try and improve things. Up here in the top left, you see I have these fists here. These are my political points. I can use these... Every decision I make costs a certain number of points, and I can only, and every quarter I get more points. And I'll use those to spend each term. Um, this episode I'll probably do two quarters, 
I'll normally do three, but I've got a lot of explaining to do in this episode, I think. And a lot of figuring things out. So, let's see. Um, right now our liberal population isn't overly happy with us. And I'm okay with that. And also parents aren't happy with us either. Which is an issue. And we've got an asthma epidemic. And this is helping, or er, hurting a lot of things, making people unhappy and unhealthy. And I kind of want to get rid of that because it's affecting our productivity, which is affecting our GDP. And we have such a good education system that I don't want to be squandering it if people are dying of asthma. So we're going to try to improve this. So we're going to hover over this, and here we can see what is affected and what is affecting the asthma epidemic. So car usage is. I'm actually not sure if that's helping the uh, getting rid of the asthma or being a problem. I'm guessing it's a problem. I think it's helping it thrive, yeah. And the environment is helping destroy the asthma epidemic. So we want to try to improve the environment. And here we see that car usage is damaging the environment. So we want to see about maybe putting in a car tax. Can we do that? Let's see. Okay, now if we do this, we can make adjustments and we'll get money from the car tax, but also it'll affect people's thoughts. Now the environmentalists, they're they're gung-ho about this. They'll make be happy that I'm doing this. However, um the middle class, the motorists, um, motorist income, those farmers, they'll be mad too. But, uh, you know, you gotta take the good with the bad in this. Right, so I'm going to raise this from 26 million to 60 million dollars. I'm going to apply the change there. Okay. And that used up a lot of our points. So we are going to have to do something small or just skip to the next turn. So hopefully that'll affect car usage, which will affect the environment, which will affect the asthma epidemic. So as you can see, everything is really interconnected, and I kind of like that about this game. So let's see, um, can we do anything with labor laws? No, too expensive. Um, what's this? Small business, grandson, they're all happy, that's fine. Um, citizenship tests. Let's see, what happens if we adjust this? It raises patriotism, patriots are happy, lowers racial tension and immigration. Liberals kind of don't like it, nor do the minorities. But, um, racial tension. Do we need to get rid of racial, or is that increasing racial tensions? Mm, let's, let's leave that for now. Let's see. <laughs> what, what could be small? Um, what's this? Jury trial. The right to be tried by ordinary members of the public. Hmm. Well, well this is actually quite expensive. But I guess we can make the liberals a bit happier if we raise this. It's going to cost us a bit of money, though. So let's just raise it a tiny bit. Liberals are like a percent happier at us. And now we can end our turn. Because we're out of points, there's really not much we can do. Alright, now at the start of every turn, or at the end of every turn, we get a quarterly report before we go to the next one. This will show us if there's been any improvement in the six categories we've seen earlier. And it'll also tell you if anything interesting is uh, going on. And just tell you how you're doing. Um, right now our popularity report is only 19%, that's pretty bad. Um, let's see, and the there's an urgent policy question that requires my attention. Debt protection law. Debt collection agencies have been in the news because of aggressive methods they are using to extract payment from people who owe large sums of money. These debt collection agencies provide credit to people whom larger, more respectable companies will not lend money. A law is proposed to limit the ways in such agencies can operate. Okay, so the poor people are being oppressed because they decided to take money out from private companies who have 
a bit harsher ways of having people repay money. So we can choose to limit agency activity. These agencies are preying on the weakest and the poorest in society, often tricking them into borrowing money at exorbitant rates that can never be repaid. This is little more than extortion, and the government should act at once to limit severely the activities of such unscrupulous companies, or we can allow agencies to operate. Nobody forces people to borrow money they can't repay, and restrict the rights of debt agencies to recover legitimate debts would be counterproductive. People need to learn to live within their means and not expect the state to bail them out of trouble if they cannot learn to do so. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with allow agencies to keep operating like this. we got to keep the market open, and I believe I saw here... The retired are quite happy, and that means we have a decent welfare plan here. So, that means that um, the poor people should be fine with just that. I mean, it makes sense to me, so... And, see here, our popularity has gone up. That's, that's pretty good. So, yeah, we're going to do one more day. And today, actually, we are going to take a look at our cabinet. Now, our cabinet are the people who take the policy changes that we want and put them into place and they're the, also the people who get us our political points for each turn. Now as you can see here we've got a bunch of people some of them are pretty good some of them could be better. Um, loyalty is what gets us our points um, experience and effectiveness is what makes them use the policies. Now when you start a new game, I've heard that it's always useful to reshuffle the cabinet. That fires everyone and allows you to start fresh, hiring a new. So, for foreign policy, we need someone who wants to do foreign policy and is relatively loyal. Now, we had Heather Rodriguez there before. I'm going to put her back into her position. She's fine. Welfare. Um, welfare I'm not overly concerned, we've got a good welfare system in place already, so therefore we're going to focus more on loyalty, she looks fine, let's hire her, um, economy, minister for industry, let's see, now we need someone whose desired job is economy, they'll just be better at it in general, like you, Joyce Allen, I'll take you, um, we need a tax person, um, now you're quite loyal, but we could find someone with a bit more experience. Oh, you're actually more loyal, but you're less experienced. So he might be best for experience. You don't want to do tax. You... Oh. Well, you're quite good. You want to do tax. I'll take you. Okay, so we have uh, Dennis Bennett. Tax. Public Services Minister. Let's see. You could do that. Um... Let's see who else is here. Um, public, yeah, you're not very good in either category, so I'm not gonna keep you. You at the top. You, you're, you're good. I'll hire you. Law and order. Who do we want to do our law and order policies? Robert Powell. You're not quite experienced, but experience comes with time. You're hired. Transport. Let's see. Yeah, you're good. Alright, so now every turn we're going to get 30 fist points, rather than our 26 that we were getting before. These people aren't exactly the most experienced, but you know, they'll get better at it. Maybe. So, what do we want to do today? How is our asthma problem coming along? Okay, now as you can see, not much has changed. Um, actually, I think there's a slight downward move to this, but it's not a lot. Now, to get rid of the asthma problem, we need to get it down, I believe, to here. Down below this green line. That's going to take quite a bit. So we need to improve the environment. Let's see, what's this hybrid cars initiative? Hmm. All right. Well, we want to improve our environment, so I think we let's raise this to 2.5 billion dollars. We'll make the environmentalists happy. The motorists, they'll be happy. Car usage, it'll go up. 
but the environment will also will improve more than the car usage will go up so that should be fine environmentalist membership will go up environmentalist income will go up and oil demand will go down those are all pretty good things I'd say so we're going to do this let's see we have 13 fist points left um, what's this technology grants well, technology is already doing pretty well um, what does technology have to do with religion? Oh, so as technology goes up, religion goes down. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Now we have creationist versus evolution here. We could be pretty controversial with this. Ooh, evolution only. <laughs> I don't have enough fist points for that. Next turn. Next turn. Um, let's see. Ooh, biofuel subsidies that lowers oil demand does lowering oil oil demand does that um what does lowering oil demand do um car usage causes it to go up but lowering oil demand i don't think will actually help us with our uh with our asthma problem oh well but yeah, we want to improve the environment somehow. Air travel. What does air travel use? Maybe we can make some cuts on air travel. Let's see. Um, no, that's more of just an environment thing. Car usage. Can we lower car usage anymore? No. Oh, petrol tax. Oh no, that's too expensive. Yeah, all the tax ideas are just really expensive. So we might as well move on to something else. Mm. Um, traffic congestion, is this being a problem? Not really. I don't really want to build roads, because that's kind of against our problem. Let's see. Um, we appear to have a vigilante mobs, which is just civilians trying to cause their own problems. Or trying to... Blah, blah, blah trying to solve their own problems in crime. So we can try to get rid of this, and for that we'd need to increase our police force. So we can raise police force a bit. Uh, oh, this is costing a lot of money. Okay, raise this up to $40 billion a quarter. Crime will go down. Violent crime will go down. Uh, state employees will make a bit more money and their membership will go up. Conservatives and state employees are going to be happy. Any social behavior will go down, alcohol abuse will go down, vigilante mobs will go down, and drug addiction will go down. So while this is an expensive choice, I'd say it's pretty good. We're going to apply the changes. We have nine fist points left, so I'm going to call it there for the day. And we're just going to go through this last quarterly report, and then I can call it the end of the episode. Oh crap, crime is... Is crime going down or gone up? Green arrow pointing up, so I presume it's going down. But with this, it's hard to tell. Okay. Oh, sorry, I bumped the mic there. Um, good news, global economy is doing well. How do people appear to our new cabinet? Um, their loyalty is trustworthy. Their effectiveness is disappointing. Well, that it can improve later. Um, credit rating is... Just B, that's okay. Um, approval rate is gone down again. <laughs> Crap. Children's food. A law has been proposed to regulate the fat content and nutritional value of sold food to children, including food sold in fast food restaurants, and of course, food served in schools is likely to incur costs for food retailers. Leave law and change. You cannot interfere with the free market. This is state interfering in people's lives. If kids want to eat fatty junk food and the parents do not mind, then who are the politicians to tell people not to eat hamburgers? Or, we could regulate children's food. Obesity is a major problem, which has a severe impact on people's health. Marketing unhealthy food to people at such an early age is unacceptable, and we should pass the law now to safeguard future health of our citizens. Well, <laughs> normally, I would choose to leave the law unchanged. Because... I don't want to be interfering in something so menial 
as to what people put into their mouths. But, right now health is a problem, and if we select to regulate children's food, health should go up. And also, we have a strong education system. And I don't want to waste our education system on people who are just going to die at young ages because of health problems. So I'm going to choose to regulate children's food going against my initial judgments. Alright, and I am going to call it here for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe, favorite, comment, and whatever. And thanks for watching.